Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're talking B350 motherboards, or more precisely, what my top 5 B350 list looks like. Since starting the top 5 series all the way back in June now, uh, with my top 5 GTX 1070 graphics card picks, many of you have been hounding me to make an AMD B350 motherboard version, and well, it's been on my to-do list now for many months. Finally, things have quietened down enough in December and with Tim coming on board to carry some of the workload, that's freed up a bit of my time, so I thought I'll put this video together. As usual, I'm not just picking five products and saying, this one's the best, this one's second best, third best, and so on. I'm a little more creative than that, or at least we like to think we are. Anyway, the categories for this video include best ultra cheap motherboard, best value ATX model, best mini ITX model, best overclocker, and the most important category, best looking. Yeah, that last one's a bit of a fun bonus round. Anyway, let's get into it. Right, so first up, my best entry level B350 motherboard and the award goes to the ASRock AB350M. For $60 US, it simply can't be beat. Apart from the fact that there really aren't any cheaper B350 motherboards to pick from, it wins for the simple fact that it beats everything else priced between $60 and $70 US. In fact, the next best board would be the Pro 4 version, which packs two extra DIMM slots, so slightly better for those wanting to upgrade their memory in the future. The ASRock AB350M might only offer two DIMM slots, but you also get a real three-phase V-Core VRM with a doubler, so it is a 3 plus 3 design, and you also get M.2 support. The rest of the board is pretty basic, but there's really nothing inherently bad about the design or the feature set. For the price, you really are getting a great motherboard. For those of you buying an AMD APU though, you will want the Pro 4 version as that model does provide display connectivity and you get things like DVI, VGA and HDMI. For those though not interested in using integrated graphics, the AB350M offers a healthy amount of USB ports. You get two USB 2.0 ports and six USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports. If you are after USB Type-C though, again you will have to go for the Pro 4 model. The onboard audio is decent and you get a basic but tried and true Realtek Gigabit Ethernet controller. All in all though, value for money, the ASRock AB350M is the best choice for those that want to spend as little as possible, but still want a board that can safely overclock the Ryzen 5 1600 or any of the other Ryzen CPUs for example. The first board I ever tested the Ryzen 5 series of CPUs on was the ASUS Prime B350 Plus, and I have to say it's one of the best B350 motherboards that I've used to date. There are more expensive and arguably better standard ATX boards available, but for those looking to spend as little as possible while still receiving a great motherboard, the Prime B350 Plus packs a lot at the $110 price point. I have to admit I was tossing up between the ASUS Prime B350 Plus and Gigabyte's AB350 Gaming 3. I have both of the boards and I very much like both of them, and frankly picking between the two is very difficult. User reviews though, they do seem to lean towards the Gigabyte board, but in their current form with the latest BIOS, I personally prefer the ASUS model, so that's the one I'm going to go with. Uh, it's a great overclocker and I've managed to extract the most out of all my Ryzen CPUs with it. Like the ASRock AB350M that we looked at just a moment ago, I feel like the ASUS Prime B350 Plus is a leader at its price point. This coupled with the excellent overclocking is the key reason for why I have picked it. Compared to similar price boards, the VRM of the Prime is also much better as you get four real phases. I have to admit there really isn't a huge amount of competition for the best B350 Mini ITX motherboard. I believe there are only about four boards on offer right now, so yeah, not a lot of competition, but there are two standout models in my opinion, and that is the Gigabyte AB350N Gaming Wi-Fi and the ASRock AB350 Gaming ITX AC, and both cost the same amount at around $115. Uh, ASUS does offer a nice looking ROG Strix B350i Mini ITX board, but it's pretty hard to come by at the moment, and it does seem very pricey. For me, ASRock wins this battle and therefore my money would go towards an AB350 Gaming ITX AC. Although I'm not 100% sure which board ultimately offers the best VRM design, they are both adequate when paired with a Ryzen 7 CPU, so that's really the main thing. That said though, the VRM on the Gigabyte board does seem to run quite a bit hotter than that of the ASRock board. 
Other reasons why I prefer ASRock's board include this superior UEFI experience, the Intel Gigabit LAN, higher quality implementation of the Realtek ALC1220 codec, USB Type-C support, and it does have three fan headers, not just two. That last one is a bit of a small detail, but I do love my fan headers. Now, if you're after an affordable B350 motherboard that can land those big overclocks, so four gigahertz, <laughs> with a Ryzen 7 1700, for example, then I feel like the MSI B350 Crate Gaming is the board you're after. Despite the very reasonable $110 asking price, it packs the same 4 plus 4 VRM design of the more expensive and higher end X370 boards, such as the $160 MSI X370 Gaming Pro Carbon, for example. For a B350 motherboard at this price, the VRM is exceptional. The board also packs some decent features, though overall I would have to say it's not as nice as that little ASRock board that we just looked at. Uh, the audio and networking solutions, for example, they're inferior. In fact, I would say in terms of those kind of features, it's quite similar to the ASUS Prime B350+. Plus. I should just quickly note though that if you still want the strong overclocking capabilities of the Crate motherboard but you are after better audio and networking than the slightly more expensive MSI B350 Gaming Pro Carbon, that might be the way to go. It costs just $10 more and it packs the same 4 plus 4 VRM but it does offer a better Realtek audio codec and you do get Intel gigabit networking. The Gaming Pro is also a more sedate looking motherboard, but I think the crate's kind of cool and I enjoy the aggressive looking design. The big issue though with these MSI motherboards for my fellow Aussies is the fact that they're not sold in Australia. So that's disappointing and I'd say my fallback then would be the ASUS Prime at B350+. I actually happen to think that the MSI B350 Crate Gaming does look great and I'm a bit sore that we can't purchase one locally. You can order it via Newegg, but once you factor in shipping, it's really not a great deal at all. $40 shipping, yeah, I don't really want one that badly. Thankfully though, if you are after a unique looking board, there are quite a few alternatives and my new favourite is one that I recently used in a build and that's MSI's B350M Mortar Arctic. The board might only pack a four phase VRM, but even so, you won't have any trouble when it comes to overclocking. I paired mine with a Ryzen 7 1700X, overclocked to four gigahertz by only changing about two settings that was very stable and ran at reasonable temperatures. So you'll get on fine with a six core Ryzen 5 processor, which seems like probably a more realistic pairing with a B350 board of this caliber. And if you do get a capable chip, then running at 24 seven at four gigahertz won't be an issue. I do get that looks aren't, or at least shouldn't be, of great importance, but I also get why those who are passionate about their PC enjoy the bling. The great thing though about the Mortar Arctic is that it costs just $95 US or $135 Aussie, and for that you get a reasonably well-equipped motherboard, so it's not all just for show. Well. There you have it, my top five B350 motherboard picks. Before wrapping things up, I would like to just note a few things. Almost all B350 motherboards are designed and capable of safely pairing an eight core 16 thread Ryzen 7 CPU, such as the 1800X, for example. In fact, the only board I know of that isn't able to do just what I said is the ASRock AB350M-H. DV. Yeah, that's it. It's the HDV. Uh, that board, I think ASRock only lists compatibility with 65 watt Ryzen CPUs. So that means that you could technically use the Ryzen 7 1700, uh, not the 1700X or the 1800X, but you could use the plain Jane 1700, but you certainly shouldn't overclock it on that particular motherboard. I have to say, it's an interesting choice ASRock made with the AB350M-HDV, as the plainer sounding AB350M is much cheaper, and that's the board we looked at first as my best value entry level board. So my advice is if you want a cheap AM4 motherboard that offers display connectivity that can't overclock, just get an A320 board for like $50.
Also, it's worth noting that when buying a premium B350 motherboard, you don't spend too much because good quality X370 boards, they start for around $130 US. So typically you are looking at spending say $20 to $30 US more on a X370 board of comparable quality to that of the B350 version. And for those of you unaware, the X370 chipset provides four extra USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports and two extra SATA 6 gigabits per second ports, thanks to the inclusion of two extra PCIe 2.0 lanes. It also supports multiple GPUs using a dual eight times configuration. It has to be said though, for most users, the X370 boards offer little over the B350s, which is why the cheaper B350 motherboards are so popular. And I think that about covers everything, so I'm gonna leave it at that. If you liked the video, please take a moment to hit the like button. And of course, if you agree or disagree with my picks, I'd love to hear from you below in the comment section. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.